The boundaries of flight research have been explored by only a few. Few have touched the edge of space in a rocket-powered research aircraft or stunned skeptics by successfully flying wingless airplanes. Few have tempted fate for the sake of research and discovery of the unknown. Bill Dana is one of those few aviation pioneers that has reached beyond the cutting edge of technology. Throughout his distinguished career, he has piloted many of the experimental flight research aircraft that have revolutionized aeronautics and spaceflight. Bill became interested in airplanes as a boy growing up in Bakersfield, California. I remember seeing uh, B-25s and P-38s flying over at the start of World War II, and there was a something very glorious and exciting about uh, the war birds, and, uh, and I was attracted to it, and I never really lost my uh, ambition to, to fly those airplanes. Bill graduated from West Point in 1952 and became an Air Force officer. He served as a fighter pilot in Korea flying F-84s. After the war, Bill graduated from USC with a master's degree in aeronautical engineering. He joined NASA in 1958 and began flying as a research pilot in 1959. When I first met him, I thought he was just a young punk kid that came to NASA. And uh, of course, I was a big test pilot at Edwards and thought, you know, who is this kid? He was an exceptional pilot. Uh, he was a dedicated professional in terms of when you gave Bill a test card, you knew that's what he was going to do and he was going to follow that test card and follow that profile to the best of his ability. And he was going to get you all of the data that he could. Bill flew the rocket-powered X-15 to a top speed of 3,897 miles per hour and achieved astronaut status when he reached an altitude of 310,000 feet. His evaluations of the X-15's vertical displays and demonstration of energy management techniques for approach and landing contributed to the overall success of that program. The X-15 was both figuratively and literally the, the high point of my career. And the reason the X-15 was my favorite airplane was that its performance was so vastly superior to anything else I flew. The first X-15 mission was exciting. I had done a lot of practice in the simulator. I can't tell you how many simulator hours I had, but it was probably 50 or 100, all of this for a 10-minute flight. And I'd flown several hundred practice landings in various fighter airplanes that would configure to fly like an X-15. and then go practice dead stick landings in. And I guess my perception of the first flight was that, uh, that it would just be a routine motoring back to the, the uh, dry lake bed at Edwards and then, then that the tense part would be the, the dead stick landing because I'd never flown a dead stick landing before. All of my landings had been with a, an engine running uh, to get me out of trouble if need be. And when I launched in the X-15, why well, it turned uh, out to be the other way around, that all the excitement was, uh, was while the engine was running, a great big engine and lots of acceleration and things happening very, very fast. And I really didn't catch up with the airplane till I was back down to about Mach 2, where I had been before in fighter airplanes. And here I was back over Edwards at about Mach 2, and uh, I'd been there before, and, and the landing was very comfortable. It was all the things before the landing that, uh, that I got behind the airplane in. Milt Thompson once said that the X-15 was the only airplane he'd ever flown where he was glad when the engine quit. <laughs> but early flight research did not come without a great deal of unknown risk. Bill Dana, like many of the test pilots, spent hours practicing their emergency procedures in the simulator and in the training aircraft. He was probably one of the better people uh, to have around in an emergency or some unexpected anomaly. Uh, he just seemed to have an act for, for grasping the situation and doing something right. He was dedicated to, to running the simulator as much as possible, uh, to evaluating all of those emergency procedures and all of the eventualities that might take place. And he was well prepared for each flight. And <laughs> that paid off because uh, he too had his emergencies in the airplane, as we all did, and I think you can probably count on one hand the, the number of X-15 flights that went without some kind of an emergency happening. And all of them weren't serious, but there was some sort of an emergency on, on probably 90% of the flights. 
I think I was willing to endure the risk to, uh, to uh, be allowed to face the challenges. And that, that is what risk uh, solving is, is, uh, is surmounting a challenge. And to be able to fly uh, a mission that appears to be very hazardous and to fly it safely is a, a formidable accomplishment. I think it was that accomplishment that, that drove me to, to face the challenges. But there was something Bill feared more than the danger itself. And there's a whole staff of, uh, of engineers in the control room watching uh, every move you make. And my fear was that I would do something that would embarrass myself in the eyes of my peers. And that was the fear. I don't ever remember being afraid I was going to die. Bill's experience with the X-15 rocket-powered aircraft ideally led him into the lifting body program. He was instrumental in validating that these vehicles could be precisely controlled and landed on conventional runways. His efforts gave NASA the confidence it needed to proceed with the space shuttle design. He became a believer in the lifting body program after watching Dale Reed and Milt Thompson fly the Plywood M2 behind a C-47 transport aircraft. And that probably was the big turning point in my assessment of the lifting body when I saw the full-scale plywood airplane on the tow line behind the, the C-47. Why well, I realized that we had an airworthy shape and it, it defied imagination. It didn't look like the uh, M2 had any visible means of support, but there it was flying quite nicely and it released from the tow line, glided back uh, over the lake bed and uh, flared and landed. And I think probably at that time I became a believer in the, uh, in the lifting body shape. With skepticism heightened after the M2-F2 crash, Bill personally led the effort to validate the revised aerodynamic database and control system for the M2-F3 simulator to ensure that the vehicle would be stable and controllable. A third vertical fin was also added to the M2 shape to prevent yaw due to aileron deflection. I had no apprehensions about the first flight in the M2 F3 and the flight went off exactly as predicted and the airplane had about 25 or 30 more flights, uh, all of them without grief. And so I knew that the M2 F2 had handling qualities problems and I knew how to fix them and I knew that they were fixed in the M2 F3 and I wasn't apprehensive about it. Uh, I do remember coming back uh, into the briefing room from uh, from uh, that first flight in the M2 F3, and the, the attendees at the, uh, at the debriefing applauded as I walked in the room. And uh, I never had that happen before or after, and it, it uh, kind of uh, disarmed me. I wasn't prepared for it, and I didn't see the need for applause there because I knew that I was flying a safe airplane, but it still was made clear to me that other people were apprehensive about that flight. Bill has been involved in 45 other types of research aircraft, distinguishing himself as an internationally recognized test pilot. I really appreciate the things that Bill has done over the years for the programs I've been involved with. Everything he's ever done has been very, very professional and, and very good. You know, sometimes we forget that NASA is really doing a job for the country, and uh, uh, I think Bill's part in that is significant. He never stood up uh, in front of me or anyone else that I can ever recall and said, Hi, I'm Bill Dana. I'm really great. Uh, he didn't do things with words. He did things by actions. And you knew he was great by watching what he did. I certainly uh, would have liked to have done more. I'd have liked my career to have lasted longer. And I think looking back, I could have been more productive. But on the other hand, I am grateful for a long run of doing what I like to do. And I was fortunate enough to to have some really good programs uh, fall my way. Bill Dana's contribution in the fields of aeronautical and space research have established a legacy that is looked upon with awe. It's also a legacy that continues every day at Dryden. Bill embodies the Dryden spirit of a talented individual working to shape the future. His example of professionalism, modesty, and dedication toward a career he truly loves is something to be admired by us all.